Savannah project, which is Hadoop on OpenStack integration that's been started at the beginning of this year in the collaboration between several companies. And today we'll be presenting the results of the work that's been done. Um, and today's speaker is myself. I'm Ilya Elterman. I'm Iranian platform product as part of Mirantis OpenStack. Also, we'll have here Matt Farrelly, principal engineer at Red Hat and Core uh, Savannah contributor. And we'll have Sergey Lukyanov from Mirantis, who is Savannah project technical lead. So what we're going to talk about is I'll give the, ev the overview from the different angles and we'll try to provide as much of the context as possible for those who are not aware of what we're working about. And then uh, Matt and Sergey will talk of the actual features of the actual status quo of the features at the Savannah as well as a roadmap and we'll show you a small live demo of how it's work. So what Savannah is? Um, Savannah is actually a project to bring the big data and data processing to OpenStack. And it sits on the operations level. It provides an uh, provision and operation of the Hadoop clusters. And on, on, on top of that, as a next layer, will provide an, uh, capabilities of uh, scheduling operating Hadoop just. There was a kind of misconception that whether it's kind of mixing of the two different set of APIs of controls in one project. So the answer is not. It's just uh, different levels of the operation and infrastructure support that Savannah is doing. So essentially, we're providing automation tools for people to do uh, Hadoop cluster self-service provisioning and to run the jobs on, on top of the OpenStack, uh, on the Hadoop on the OpenStack. So um, to start with, I would like to give some insights for uh, you know, OpenStack crowd to what Hadoop is. So Hadoop is pretty much like OpenStack is not just a single product. It's a platform. It's a big data platform, which is an open source project governed by the uh, Apache Foundation. Uh, it consists of the set of the uh, it consists of the set of the components or kind of individual project that has its own lifecycle roadmap and so forth. Pretty much like an OpenStack. There is a set of the core services and there is a set of the integrated uh, services that that works on the top. And also somewhat alike in OpenStack, there is difference of the uh, vendors that are working to build out of this kind of open source component, the platforms, uh, the actual supported platform uh, that is going to be shipped to the, to the real customer. So I took the example from Hortonworks data platform, uh, who is working with us on Savannah as an example to show how kind of Hadoop ecosystem is look alike. And it's, it's, I mean, on this picture, it's not even the full list of the services that are available on the Hadoop. So the core services include like HDFS is a is distributed file system where you can actually store the information, the data. Then there is a uh, data processing engine that's on top, which was originally MapReduce. Now it's MapReduce 2.0, also known as Yarn, which is more like general purpose uh, distributed data processing engine with different plugins on, on the way how you can actually do uh, calculations. And also there is a layer of the services that can work on top of that. For instance, PG Hive, it's in a sense that it kind of DSLs to do the actual data manipulation. So like PIG and Hive themselves do the actual data transformation and manipulation, while Savannah just provision those services and help users to configure those services to work correctly. Um, so, uh, in, term, in, in, in terms of in terms of whether it makes sense to bring Hadoop on OpenStack or not, and where does I mean, who 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 cares about the Hadoop? This graph is actually shows who cares about the Hadoop. So the red line is actually Hadoop popularity. The Google Trends for the Hadoop popularity. It's been started earlier. It's growing. You can see the line of growth. The angle of growth is the same as for OpenStack and in terms of the interest and the overall world community is still kind of quite significant and bigger than for OpenStack it is. So integration will also can serve the OpenStack good service. Uh, why, why would that do it? What are the use cases? So the central use case is a self-service provisioning of the clusters. You can do it for DFOQA uh, purposes or to provision the elastic uh, Elastic production cluster. Uh, also, this elasticity concept helps to uh, better utilize the capacity of the overall OpenStack. Okay, imagine if you have a kind of thousand node OpenStack cluster, and 
there's a bunch of the compute that will be from time to time just standing by and being able to provision workloads uh, using, using Savannah and Hadoop can uh, help a kind of much better utilization. Um, and, and, the, and, the, and, and the last use case is also very important is actually once again to ease data processing for the end users so Savannah can take care of the, uh, all the infrastructure and uh, provisioning work and the end users can provision the actual workloads. So this picture is actually to show how Savannah integrates with the, Hadoop, uh, with the OpenStack ecosystem. Um, it can be controlled through Horizon. We have a plugin for Horizon. It uses Keystone for authentication. Uh, we do integration of Hadoop and Swift, so the Swift can read the data directly from uh, Hadoop can read direct data directly from Swift. We plan to add support of the trove data sources, uh, and we also currently Savannah talks to the Nova Glansk Cinder and Neutron directly, but we plan to add hidden as abstraction layer. Uh, so here is a kind of few notes on uh, where Savannah is. Savannah is an official incubated OpenStack project, quite recently been accepted. We've released 0.3 version on, uh, on the same date of the Havana release. And going forward, we'll just keep on the, uh, whatever the OpenStack naming conversion and code drops are. Here's a list of the Hadoop distros. Actually, first two of them, Vanilla Apache Hadoop Reference Implementation, Hortonworks Data Platform, are actually implemented and officially re released as part of the official release. And we have Intel distribution uh, submitted for review, and Cloudera distribution uh, is submitted in form of blueprints. And actually, Savannah is already included in, in two distros, which I'm really pleased that it's happened in such earlier. It's included in, op, uh, in Red Hat RDO and Admirantis OpenStack. So uh, another kind of points to make, Savannah at this point is not just a toy. It's an actual tool that can be used. It's production ready, it can be used in production. Uh, this is a kind of a preview of the, what Savannah performance on, on its own is. Uh, we'll be doing more studies on the actual performance of the Hadoop on, on OpenStack and Savannah in much more rigorous way. This is a kind of a preview that shows that 200 nodes cluster can be provisioned uh, in actually less than seven minutes using Savannah. So, and I'm really grateful for the community uh, around the projects and Hortonworks and Red Hat in particular by uh, doing lots of heavy lifting on making Savannah happening. And I'm also really grateful to see a new names coming in and doing the actual contribution to the, uh, to the project. So um, with this, I'm pass, passing the words to the next presenter to talk about sp specific elastic data processing. Hi. Can I get this? There we go. So, um, so this, I'm going to be talking about what we're terming EDP. So this is elastic data processing. Um, it's the feature that's released for the first time in this third release of Savannah. So and it's done all of this in six months, uh, building on the initial code drop that the Mirantis folks did with some uh, basic cluster ops to having, our, having the Hortonworks folks come in and um, work to create a, a plug-in um, architecture so that different management layers can be um, plugged into Savannah. And then finally, all of that infrastructure to actually enable um, primary use case of basically delivering uh, Hadoop ecosystem to end users. And in this case, when we talk about end users, we're not talking about people who actually have detailed knowledge about what it takes to manage a Hadoop system, to spin up a Hadoop system, to tune a Hadoop system, to even do basic configuration of a Hadoop system. An end user is just somebody who's got two things. They've got some data, and they've got some question that they want to answer. And in this case, the, the data lives in some sort of repository, be it Swift, HDFS, some other um, file system that you can attach to your, to your cluster. And the question is typically encoded in um, embed, embodied in code. So a little bit about why we're, why we're doing this and why this is kind of an important use case for us. Um, this is not necessarily the most exciting quote. Uh, I've had a couple conversations with people that have real numbers on this, and if you happen to be one of them and you can give me a reference, I'd be, love to see it. Um, but basically, um, EMR, and, sorry, EDP is not a new idea. It's been out there for at least five years um, in Amazon. 
And at this point, Amazon's doing, they say here, millions of, of launches of Hadoop clusters a year. If you do the math, that works out to be a little bit more than 100 an hour um, for every million that, they, but that those millions are. And this is growing. This is just, this is just um, AWS. There's also uh, Azure and Google obviously has their own and whatnot. Um, and as, as those different clouds are starting to add this value, they're, they're both adding a variety and a depth around, around the offerings on top of their public clouds. And why do we, why do we kind of care about that? We care about that because those, those offerings are rarely, if ever, open. They're pretty much always proprietary. They rarely, if ever, allow for positive feedback from their users to shape how they, how they, like, how they exist in the future. And they don't enable, they, they primarily enable lock-in to the cloud provider themselves. So for instance, on the, on the Google side, you've got Google has a, a MapReduce implementation. They integrate it with some of their data services. So that's, that's something that you can only get when you live inside the, the Google Cloud. If you look at Azure, they've gone even deeper in some places, integrating with multiple data sources and integrating with um, multiple presentations, like being able to do spread, spreadsheets interfaces for your processing, which is something that's actually very common. People, I'm sure, are really familiar with the spreadsheet kind of interface. And then AWS themselves, they've been doing this for over five years now or whatnot. And they've, they've done all of the things that the, the Microsoft and the Google folks have done, plus they've started adding, or they've been adding for a long time, public data sets. So now when you go to one of these clouds, you not only have uh, Hadoop provisioned for you in a simple fashion, you have deep integration into different offerings, and you have data um, that's available to you. All of these things are locking you into those clouds. So, um, we can do better in, in OpenStack. So this is kind of motivation for Savannah and doing um, EDP is that we can not only match the functionality with this, with this community, this, this group of people, but we can actually exceed it. And in a number of places we have already exceeded it in the way that we allow for tuning and optimizing the clusters that are actually deployed by giving information about the deployment of OpenStack itself and bubbling that up into the Hadoop schedulers. So, um, the, yes, so basically pulling all that together, um, letting us use this, this community and you guys to actually um, do better and eliminate the, the barriers to entry of people who have deployed already in AWS or Google or Azure and moving those, moving workloads into OpenStack. So kind of to that end, I think I mentioned this already, in six months, we've already pretty much matched um, functionality with, with EMR. We haven't necessarily added all the other um, kind of like side offerings like databases and data sets and whatnot. That's not necessarily our purview, but it's maybe the purview of some other people in this audience. Um, so for this, this third release of Savannah, we've done integration into the UI. So you can go to Horizon, um, click through, start up a cluster, create a template, start up a cluster of that template. And then um, I think the, the demo that Sergey is going to show us will allow you, will show you how you can take um, basically a pig job, um, submit, it to, submit it through um, Horizon, let it run, get your results back. In addition to the UI integration on, in good OpenStack fashion, we've also um, produced APIs, which others can start to integrate with. Um, specifically on, I mentioned data sources, we have Swift for this release and the roadmap, I think we're talking about uh, HDFS and some other options um, to extend that. And then the, the job types are basically the way you can just describe your question right now is MapReduce, um, jars, pig, and hive. And one point, this last point to, to mention here when, um, when Ilya was pointing out what the Hadoop ecosystem is like and it's all these different projects that all kind of come together to form the platform, we're actually leveraging that platform itself. So there's nothing kind of proprietary or surprising in the, um, what we're doing from a Hadoop community perspective. So anybody who knows Hadoop can well, show up here, look at this, see that we're using Uzi and kind of have a very good <coughs> understanding of the system itself. So with that, I'll hand off to Sergey. Okay, uh, thank you, Matt. Um, let's take a look on the current state in terms of uh, non-EDP features, I mean cluster ops. Uh, 
Sure, we have REST API that provides us an ability to create clusters in one click uh, using the pre-configured templates. We have uh, two types of templates for node groups and for clusters where you can specify different Hadoop configurations and uh, some OpenStack related configurations like flavors, uh, singular volumes, uh, network configuration, etc. The next point is really cool. We support manual cluster scaling. You can uh, use REST API or our dashboard to add or remove nodes to the existing cluster. You can uh, add uh, and remove uh, some types of nodes. Uh, I mean, you can add new types of nodes. If you need more storage nodes or more computation nodes, you can just do it. Uh, and uh, you can remove some existing nodes. And uh, for the case of removing uh, data nodes, the commissioning will be automatically done. Uh, the next, uh, the next, next interesting scene is, uh, is that Savannah uh, provides interface and location control support. Uh, that means that uh, you can specify uh, that, uh, for example, all data nodes should be grouped in, in one interface node group. That means that all data nodes will be located on different physical hosts, and each DFS will be reliable. Um, and the location control is about uh, to support uh, single volumes as uh, a backend for HDFS. So HDFS will store their data on the single volumes, and the uh, cinder could be backed by some network storages, for example, or for uh, always uh, uh, hardware uh, on the hosts. Um, the next scene uh, is that is, is about data locality. Uh, we're supporting both REC and uh, full-level REC awareness uh, for HDFS and SWIFT. This means that you can specify uh, topology for, uh, for your OpenStack installation, including data centers, uh, RECs, switches, uh, and uh, Savannah will map this information to the format that is uh, reliable for Hadoop, and uh, Hadoop will use it for uh, running jobs near the data, uh, and uh, it's supported uh, for, for Swift to have a patch already merged uh, to Swift, and we have a patch already merged to the Hadoop to support it. Um, and and uh, as about the Swift integration, in addition, we have uh, uh, an ability to use Swift as a data source and uh, data output for uh, running jobs on, on, on Hadoop. Um, in terms of integration with OpenStack, uh, sure, we have integration with Nova, Glance, Cinder, Neutron uh, to uh, provision resources. Uh, and uh, we have integration with OpenStack dashboard, as Matt said. Uh, all our functionality uh, that, uh, that is, that's presented in our REST API is supported in uh, OpenStack dashboard plugin. Uh, using the, our Python bindings client, uh, and uh, you can use uh, the next point here. Yeah? You can use uh, both Neutron and Nova network for uh, uh, with Savannah, so there are no limitations in network. And uh, we are using Keystone uh, Trust API that was released and uh, enabled by default in the Havana release uh, to perform some uh, asynchronous operations like transient cluster support when you need to remove cluster after all jobs will be uh, executed on, on it. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, let's take a look on our uh, dashboard and roadmap. I'll mix these points to uh, not wait for jobs execution. Let's start from the, some live demo. Uh, we, have, we prepared some, some funny stuff. Uh, we'll, try to calculate uh, amount of uh, to-doers and uh, uh, amount of to-dos per person and uh, uh, generate some top, uh, top persons with to-dos. Okay, let's go on to the dashboard. Here we have uh, timeout. We have some problems with projector. That part of your is 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I have some other donkey. It's probably doesn't allow more than that. It's different EGA connection. It looks okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, we. We have some uh, existing cluster uh, that was provisioned before the session. It was created using uh, some clustering templates. Uh, and uh, let's take a look on the EDP functionality in this live demo. Uh, to run the Hadoop job, we need to create several data sources, both for input and output. Let's do it. Uh, for now, we support only Swift, and uh, let's create the input. You can specify a pass in the Swift, and uh, you need to uh, add credentials to access the data. The same thing with the output. Okay, uh, now we need to upload job binaries. Uh, in our case, it will be the pick script that will calculate to do's. Let's name it to do pig. Okay, now we have the pick script uh, and uh, we can create the job using it. Uh, let's name it to Okay, uh, now we have job. Uh, we have Okay. Uh, now we have job uh, and uh, two data sources, and we need to upload our data to the Swift. We need some container. And here is uh, uh, all sources uh, from OpenStack organization uh, that was charged and uh, let's upload it. It works not very fast. We, uh, there is about 600 of megabytes in it. Okay, let's... In Swift. We uploaded uh, this data to the Swift, and here is a container that input, uh, let's have an input object. Let's check data sources. Mm, I'll create them. Yes, everything's okay. Um, okay, now we can run our job on existing cluster. Uh, as you see in the previous, uh, you can run the job on the uh, transient cluster. That means that you will be specify some configuration for cluster. It will be created for this job and uh, will be automatically removed after the, after the job completed. We'll 
try the existing cluster. So you need to specify input data source, output data source, and uh, the cluster to run the job. In addition, you can specify some uh, arguments for this job and parameters that will be passed to, to it. Uh, we are using Uzi to manage job workflows, and uh, now we can go to the clusters. Here is the existing cluster where you are in job, and we can take a look on web UIs. Here is the web UI of the, of the HDFS. We see here three, uh, three leaf nodes. Uh, here is the uh, Uzi web UI, and uh, it's not fit. Um, you can see here the job that was executed before the session. I've checked the laptop. And uh, here we can see, for example, some job logs, job configuration, where uh, our uh, job workflow uh, and the job parameters located. Here is a job definition, and uh, let's take a look on the current job. It's running now. Okay. Um, here is a web UI of the MapReduce, and uh, here we can see that there are some running tasks on workers. Okay, let's return back to the slides and, uh, oops. And uh, talk about the roadmap. Uh, as Leah said, we, we have been incubated uh, for the Ice House release, and so our main goal is to graduate from the incubation in Ice House and become the integrated project. And so we have. Uh, the main goal to integrate with OpenStack ecosystem better than now. Uh, as I said before, we have integration with uh, core projects to uh, directly provision and orchestrate resources. Um, and we are moving our orchestration code uh, to the heat. Uh, we already have some proof of concept that uses heat to provision resources. It works OK, and we uh, start moving uh, uh, our code to, to heat. Uh, I think next week. Uh, and uh, our plan is to uh, finalize it uh, till the end of the Ice House release and uh, duplicate our current uh, direct provisioning code uh, early in J release and uh, terminate it till the end of the J release. Uh, we already have some code in DevStack that uh, provides you an ability to install Savannah using DevStack with uh, not very complex configurations, but with the uh, support of Syndrome, Neutron, and others. Um, and now we are pushing some uh, additional code to, uh, to install Savannah with some prepared templates uh, to make it easier to use it. Uh, in, in terms of testing, we are now moving our integration tests to Tempest. And uh, I hope we'll push first patch in a few weeks. And we are thinking about how to make the DevStack gating process for Savannah because it's not very easy to uh, run Hadoop on virtual machines, uh, on nested virtual machines that are used for uh, DevStack gating now. They're not very large. Uh, for metrics and measurements, we'll use Silometer. Uh, and uh, we have some thoughts about to extract and uh, push some metrics to Solometry about uh, on, on the level of Savannah. Uh, I mean uh, uh, some stats like uh, number of clusters for different vendors. It could uh, help uh, to make some billing for, uh, for paid support, for example. And uh, uh, of course, uh, we're looking on Ironic to support better bare metal cluster provisioning and uh, hybrid clusters provisioning too. Um, as for the EDP, we, uh, we're thinking about enchantment it, uh, in the two different ways, uh, to support external HDFS and uh, to support uh, RDBMS uh, 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 as data sources, for example, provisioned by trough. Uh, of course, we are thinking about code hardening and uh, releasing a polished API v2. 
Uh, and uh, as Ilya said, we need to done some additional complex performance testing. Okay, that's all for the roadmap. Let's return back to the UI and take a look on how jobs are running. Okay, job is succeed. Uh, we can take a look on the Uzi UI too, and here is the success status too. So we now can go to the object store, to the demo container, and here we see the output. That's a Hadoop layout, it's not very funny. <laughs> uh, and here we can see the results. Hmm, where am I? Uh, oh, here it is. Not many to do's. And uh, here is some guy who have a lot of work and plan. Um, okay, I think that's, that's all for the live demo and for the our slides. The you also wanted to mention design track sessions. Yeah, yeah, sure. Good note. It's always exit. Um, we have design summit sessions to, for, uh, tomorrow's afternoon. We, have, we will have four sessions. Here is a link to our schedule. Mm, you're welcome. Participate. We'll discuss networking uh, problems, scalability, further integration, and uh, our a more detailed roadmap for the Ice House. So that was only an overview of the roadmap, and we will discuss uh, detailed blueprints. Okay, thank you. So we have saved a little bit of time for the questions, if there are any questions. Um, so this is a Hadoop is obviously functional for big data. Uh, let's say I have my 40 uh, terabyte file of data. Uh, could you go through the data flow and how I would use that, and how that would be sort of co-located with the processing, so I'm not moving data 40 terabytes across the network too many times? Uh, so it, it depends where you have this file. I mean, in the first place, you need to have it somewhere. Yeah. And uh, I mean, one of the options is to have it in Swift. So and in this case, if you have it in Swift, uh, then uh, we expose the information of the actual where each chunk of the data is located in the Swift, and we transport, transport this information to the, uh, actually to the Hadoop, and Hadoop can use it to schedule the tasks closer to the data. So I mean, if you're Swift, if you're running Swift and compute on the same node, then it may actually end up with not copying the data at all. So, so if you have the mixed installation uh, with Swift and uh, compute nodes on one node, so you can, uh, Sven will pass uh, awareness uh, configuration to the Hadoop, and uh, Swift file system will use this information to access data uh, on local costs. And, and just to, to add a little bit to that, Swift being the, the interface, you can always plug in different file systems below it. So like, for instance, we've done this with, with GlusterFS, where you can, have, you can have in your POSIX file system your data and then expose it through a Swift, Swift interface, which then can be consumed by the, the Hadoop cluster that Savannah started up to do locality. Running many analytics, obviously. The, the intent is that I would have my, my Hadoop cluster and then I'd import that uh, data one time uh, and it's co-located on the box, you know, with, with the processing, the local disks on the box, or? Often, often it can be, it depends on how much data it is. Sometimes you can't do co-location in, in Hadoop. Um, so, I mean, I'm, so, I'm sorry, sir, maybe let's give people chance to ask some more questions, yeah. Over here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is the performance benchmark results that you've had so far between experimental uh, deployments in Hadoop? That, that, that's a kind of big topic. We don't have any official results so far. We, we can talk about that later because we've been looking at benchmarking virtualized Hadoop versus bare metal. Oh. I mean, there's a big data panel with the different people kind of at 
making any points. I mean, it really depends on how you measure and what you measure. It really depends on the type of workloads. Ge general expectation, general expectation for the performance degradation, 10 to 20 percent. But it's also kind of an arguable topic. I mean, in, in, in terms of what you do benchmarking, ideally you need to do it in terms of the cost rather than just raw compute or whatever. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a kind of a big topic. Green shirt. No, we are not integrating with zero. We are just running Hadoop on top of the uh, virtual machine on OpenStack. Okay. Yeah. And with like, once Ironic is kind of gone, will, will be ready for production, it's exactly the same procedure will be used to deploy actual Hadoop on bare metal managed by Ironic. Yeah, we've, we've worked with the, the Hortonworks folks to, to produce a patch for Hadoop that will allow it to get location information from Swift. Yes. Do you have that today? We do not have that today. Okay. So what so, other questions are So when you guys deploy, are you deploying your workloads to Cinder or are you doing it locally in the performance service? So in terms of the Cinder, there are two options. One is to use ephemeral drive. Right. Just to place HDFS, I mean, even right now, and today with the Savannah, you can place the HDFS on the local ephemeral drive. And it will just work as a normal cluster. Or you can place it on the Cinder volume. So. Yeah, so you can, you can do both, and it comes back to the kind of like workload and performance question, because it's when, when we've been running, we do see a speed up um, with Cinder, but you often have to tune the back end of Cinder pretty substantially to make sure you get your, your architecture correct. It's a complex topic. We should talk after. About it. Any more questions? AWS, AWS API? Yes. There is no, there is no API compatibility. Yeah. Okay. So is the primary use case to go ahead and try to run the jobs like when you have extra capacity as a company? So you, we have this vast cluster of, let's say, open stack, and you want to run some big data jobs maybe at night or something like that, and normally you wouldn't have access to those resources, and now you do, and you can run it together? All right. Yeah. So you can you can certainly do that. The the kind of like depth of the of the different layers of, of the API that we've built up will allow, will allow you to do that or to have more more persistent um, clusters that you can then run jobs against. So, but that that's not the only use case. I mean, we we try to be not to be overly prescriptive to the customers. So OpenStack is an open platform. You can shape it in a way how you need this, so we have a like, really extensive mechanism of customizing actually Hadoop clusters, providing all of the kind of the Hadoop cluster parameters, as well as kind of some you may influence on the how topology of the cluster is laid, laid out. So I mean, you can just use it as a tool to provision your Hadoop cluster and operative Hadoop clusters, as well as you can go one level kind of up the stack and use it as to just to manage the workloads. So um, I think we are right running out of the time. And for those who are most interested and loyal to kind of concept of Savannah, we have a limited amount of Savannah t-shirts left that we are giving out at this talk. So one, one t-shirt in the head, first come, first serve basis. Please help yourself. <laughs>